Speaking of being president for one day, uh, Trump is back to his insinuations that he will be a dictator on day one. Surprise, surprise. So I have to be careful with this. I said once about a month ago, you only have to vote this one time. And after that, everything will be good. And the fake news said, see, he wants to be a dictator and take over the country. No, no. That's not what I said. We got to fix the country, got to make sure. And then the country will be great. And we're going to have hopefully some great person, whether it's J.D. or somebody else. And when the great somebody Joe else. Hannity asked me a question <laughs> and I jokingly said, he said, OK, let's get this. Up. You don't want to be a dictator, do you? I said, Sean. I only want to be a dictator for one day, and I'm going to close the borders and drill, baby, drill. But after that, I never want to be a dictator, right? He's going to do all that in one day. So the fake news took that answer, and they said, Sean, I want to be a dictator. Click, cut. So they said, Sean, I want to be a dictator. And they go, he wants to be a dictator. They cut the rest of the... These are the worst people. These are the worst. They said he's a threat to democracy. He wants to be a dictator. No, you know the threat to democracy are when you put incompetent people in charge of our country. That it's all that much as you ever looked in a mirror. You just like the threat <laughs> to democracy is when you put incompetent people in charge. And there, you, and we just showed you a clip of Trump reading off the teleprompter, saying he doesn't read the teleprompter. Uh, no. So again. Uh, in terms of Trump's comments about being a dictator, he's saying, yes, he wants to. Uh, yes, I want to be a dictator, but only in terms of closing the border and drilling. Sir, that has nothing to do with being a dictator. Yeah, you can just say, no, I don't want to be a dictator. I would just like to manage the border and produce more oil, even though under Biden, the United States is producing more oil than it ever has. And it, than anyone else in the world, even fucking well, OPEC countries. So yes. it'll, that just implies that he's going not just close the border, but commit extreme violence. I mean, weren't we talking about his, you know, he's going to he's cool with whatever acts of violence and doing so. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. We're, 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 fre we're fresh off of a week where Trump suggested basically. Fucking purge. Yeah. And in, in all likelihood, a, a day of violence engaged in by Trump supporters or and or law enforcement under his direction um i don't so, see the difference yeah i mean i'm Trump sure supporters and the and law enforcement yeah i tuned out a little bit for before because i was reading about the madison square garden rally he's supposedly gonna have how can he afford madison square garden for okay. his nazi rally so two things i don't know if he necessarily has the money to afford a madison square garden rally but also um well considering he's a republican in Madison Square Garden is in New York City, a city and a state that he'll never win. By all means, spend all your time campaigning in New York days before the election. I just awesome. would prefer those people to not all be in Manhattan. No, nah, totally fair, but I'd rather him be in New York setting money on fire and setting opportunity on fire. Like the opportunity cost of that when he could be in a swing state like Arizona or or Michigan, perhaps, or even North Carolina, like the opportunity cost of that is fucking insane. So, yeah, great. Go to New York. Then wasn't he in uh, Coachella today? <laughs> yeah, he's been. <laughs> why is he in California? He's not. Gonna, he's talking about he's going to mount a serious effort and win California. Like, what is he talking? About? Like, in the, again, like if any, if if Kamala Harris was doing this, this shit, right? Like if she was in, you know, I don't know, South Carolina, Mississippi, Miss, yeah, <laughs> if South Carolina was holding a rally in Mississippi and then holding a rally in Alabama and talking about she's going to mount a serious campaign to win Alabama, like the media would be lighting her on fire. But Trump does this weird, stupid shit in the media, just shrugs their shoulders. It's, it's beyond insane. But yeah, no. So. Yes, back to Trump saying he wants to be a dictator on day one. Obviously, he actually wants to be a dictator that has nothing to do with drilling or border security. You don't need a, a dictator to manage either of those. 
All you need is Congress to pass a bill to help you with the border. <laughs> and again, as we said, Biden's found a, way, found a way to get oil production up in America to levels we've never seen before. Uh, it, it, we've never seen anything like it. Uh, but Trump is also, made, in terms of being a dictator, Trump has also made comments here about, um, well, you know, if you are a Kamala Harris supporter, he's saying maybe you might not want to come out and publicly say that because bad things just might happen to you. Are you, is anybody, okay, is there anybody here that's going to vote for Lion Kamala? Please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. Actually, I should say, don't raise your hand. It would be very dangerous. We don't want to see anybody get hurt. Please don't raise your hand. Sounded like a threat. I mean, no, it was definitely that's kind of, it, I don't know. That one was kind of dumb, but it could be a threat. Or I mean, could just, well, he he's said kind of that. Dumb. Did you see the that one uh, that video of that MAGA and he was saying if he saw someone with Harris because like Trump's rally was like later that evening. So it was like coming on the backs of that guy saying if he saw anybody wearing it, that they were going to have a knot on their head faster than some some bullshit that this guy was saying. And then you add to that that sheriff that said you know, send in the names of anybody that has a Harris sign in their yards. So when you yeah. take all of these things together, it most certainly is. Yeah, it's the classic terrorism and it's worse. Now, you know, Absolutely. I'm in the micro. He's talking about if you're a Harris supporter at that rally, maybe <laughs> don't raise your hand in support of Harris. But we've also seen him in numerous rallies instigate in, in violence. It's it's happened multiple times. Yeah. Uh, specifically, so I in don't want rallies. them coming to the city near where I am. <laughs> so I was just reading about uh, in the 1930s. Let's see the he- headline: 1930s. Uh, Michael Benson's gangsters versus Nazis tells you how New York judge secretly directed mafia bosses Meyer Lansky, Bugsy Siegel, to recruit an army of Jewish thugs to intimidate anti-Semites, and they just like. <laughs> We're outside a Nazi rally in New York and just beat the shit out of them. So maybe we can get something like that going again. Just, you know, these people coming in to intimidate New Yorkers, just watch your fucking backs and watch your fronts. In fairness, uh, the only time in which I find encouraging mass violence to be acceptable is when it comes to punching Nazis. Uh, So, again... I'm down with that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're not. You're never gonna <laughs> catch. Uh, look, if if there's one thing I'm gonna be hypocritical about, it's that violence against Nazis. Totally fine. Uh, you know, maybe don't engage in anything life threatening. But if you want to hit one in the face, go for it. But no, Trump. Over the course of these past few, years, I mean, over the course of the entire existence of the political version of Trump, he's done nothing but encourage acts of violence. Uh, to the point where, you know, we had pipe bombers sending bombs to his political opponents. January 6th had his own mob try to overthrow the government, kill his vice president. I mean, you know, we had the the Trumpers try and run Kamala Harris's bus off the road in Texas. Yeah, in 2020. that's true. Uh, just numerous incidents of violence and, and Trump is all about it, except for when the violence happens to be redirected towards him uh, by one of his own fellow Republicans. That is when he decides to have an issue uh, with instigating violence. But again, you know, Trump and his hypocrisy, uh, much like his stupidity and his lies, it never ends. Uh, but back to Trump in terms of wanting to be a dictator, he's also promised to engage in the largest instance of mass deportation in American history. Day one, I will seal the border and stop the migrant invasion into our country. We will begin the largest deportation operation in the history mm-hmm. of the United States. Dwight Eisenhower right now has that record. It's not, and by the way, it's not something I want to do. I dread having to do it, but we have no choice. What they've done to our country is not even believable, especially the criminals, the criminal element that's in our country. 
And again, all over the world, crime rates are down because they've taken their criminals and they've dumped them into the United States. And you know what? I would have been worse than them. I would have had it done even faster. They've dumped them into the United States of America, and that's what we have. And it's dangerous out there. We're getting... He hates to do it. It sounds an awful lot like he's really enjoying it. And I love how he goes from they're ruining, they're, they're doing terrible things here, especially the criminals. So people who are not doing any criminal activity are still terrible. It's what? And you know what? He sounds like an abusive husband. It's like, I don't like beating you, you know, like when they're, but you do it. You bring it up. That's exactly how he sounds. You make me hit you. you. And I'm hitting you yeah. out of love. Yeah, exactly. That's what sounds like it's insane. <laughs> that's, and then, that's exactly. look, given the comments he's made about Haitian immigrants uh, over the course of the past month here, um, immigrants who are in this country legally, they're they're not undocumented in any shape, form, or fashion. They're granted, uh, you know, special immigration status. Uh, even over the course of his own administration. And he's talking about deporting them as well. Uh, so, you know, his mass deportation scheme, it has nothing to do with your legal status. He just wants anyone who wasn't born here uh, out of the country. And- no, he just wants anybody black and brown. He doesn't care if you were born here or not. Because when he said, when someone had brought up like TPS or something, he's like, well, they're not legal as far as I'm concerned. Right. Regardless of their actual status. And then that lets you know, like, just what a fucking massive disaster it would be to have this dude back in power. And there's two main problems. Let's just be clear that there's both of them. I always talk about my bad faith and stupidity spectrum, and he's high on both. Uh, He he, yeah, the overlap is a circle. He underlap. He uh, he understands and doesn't understand. So he may well not know what TPS means. It's temporary protective status for the listeners but he's no i mean he but he under he wants the consequences of the actions he's taking whether or not he understands what his actual job is and ca- is capable of doing it there you, know you what go. i'm saying yes i do know what you're saying he has no idea what the fine print says but he still wants to set everything on fire regardless um and again like the dude is telling you what he's planning on doing. I mean, he's quoting Hitler. He's, you know, talking about deporting somewhere close to 60 million people in America. Uh, maybe a small percentage of those would actually be undocumented immigrants. He does not care. I mean, and this shit would be devastating to the economy. I mean, can you and just just the cost of trying to round up that many people alone? would probably cost hundreds of billions of dollars, I would imagine. And you got to put them somewhere. There's there's no one flight where you can just pack 50 million people well, onto. They would have to go at detention centers. And they, yes, those and would probably be run money. by corporations who got tax breaks through Trump's tax plan. Does he have a tax plan? Uh, I assume it involves giving uh, huge tax breaks to uh detention to to migrant detention facilities run by corporations i just made that up but you know well his tax plan currently is to give a huge tax break to people who are already making millions of dollars a year uh, millions of dollars a year and then offset that by raising taxes on the poor but no he wouldn't have um he wouldn't have corporations running these detention camps he would have his own trump branded detention camp and it would be subsidized by the government yeah I just I just imagine that we'll be forced to like we'll be down to like one television station and then every night, like before the TV signs off, we'll have to like watch him in some Kim Jong Un style thing (laughs) that he's doing (laughs) with the music playing in the the background. Yes, like I don't know. I think it was Ron Philip Kowski showing one of his rallies and is like this music is getting way more bizarre yeah i usually playing. try and cut the rallies on like after the music starts and bef- you know before the rally starts and then bef- you know after the rally ends but before the music starts back it's disgusting can't can't do it. and it gets weird and he does like the thing with the national anthem except it's not the real national anthem it's the january 6th choir national yeah. anthem which is just it, it's bizarre it's it's some cold like shit I just the dude is just how can you vote for this person? It's a total fucking disaster in every regard. I think it's 
it's it's too dismissive of how cult like it is by saying cult like and just saying <laughs> instead of saying it's a cult. It's a cult. That's true. You, you're it's absolutely cult, right about that. It it is a cult. Like <laughs> just period. It's a cult. Right. Well, in terms of um you know, Trump engaging in stochastic terrorism. Uh, he was asked by an interview that he was doing with some kind of right wing podcast uh, uh, about his relationship with Mike Pence. And uh, it speaks for itself. What about Mike Pence? You got anything for Mike Pence? Well, it's a shame because uh, he and I had a very good what relationship. Awesome. He couldn't cross the line of doing what was right, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so thanks to the Kamala Harris campaign, rapid response, social media team uh, for turning that into a high quality ad in like 20 seconds. <laughs> I think we they all- are good. They are fast. <laughs> About the dude that laughed at him when he said that he was a very truthful person. Yeah, he, is- <laughs> he laughed. <laughs> It's a oh, softball right. interview, and the guy was giggle. just like rolling. Yes, he, he was fucking falling. chuckled. Like, I have a hard time doing it to them mm-hmm. because I'm basically, you know, I'm basically a truthful person. But and, <laughs> and frankly, like, no, but frankly, <laughs> no, but frankly, uh, <laughs> he couldn't even hold it. He could not keep a straight face with that. Yeah, it was so funny. So, that yes. guy's gonna be one of the first on the wall when we have to watch that show you were talking about. Gene. <laughs> and there's gonna be the segment after the music where we watch the, the traitors. <laughs> we like, watch the the public traitor, hanging. Anyone who the list, and- yes, the public hangings. And uh, Carol for saying I was a loser this that these times. Well, I'm pretty sure Trump is highly in favor of a firing squad, so we might be short on public yeah, hangings, but we're going to um, see a lot of people lined up against the wall getting executed. He wants to see maximum carnage. He yeah. wants to see blood. Yeah, he absolutely does. I mean, if you're voting for Trump at this point, um, you got to be aware that he's going to go to the most extreme lengths possible because he'll be uh, backed by a Supreme Court who will be uh, willing to allow him to do whatever he wants, uh, regardless of how legal it actually is. And he'll have the power like in all likelihood of deputizing state and local law enforcement in red states to do whatever they want to. And by the time yeah. we're in the middle of the purge, even if you were once a, a Trump supporter, if by that time you decide this was too much for you and you try and stand up against him, he'll have you executed. So what, we're warning you in advance. They do in Florida and the Everglades where they round up the pythons and shit and it's like a free hunting day for snakes. That's whacking gonna like day. A, it's gonna what oh <laughs> whacking gonna, that's day. What we're gonna, we're gonna, it's gonna be it's gonna be all kinds of you've shit. Been, going you've on. been watching The Simpsons, huh? Um, no, I've been thinking about Whacking Day with the directive to squish uh, lantern flies, and like people get like really. Do you have lantern flies near where you are? Of course. Um, so there's just like a directive to squish them. Anyway, everyone gets all into it. They're like, "Yeah, get it! Oh, you got it!" And I'm like, "Oh, we're all like revering smushing these cute little bugs." So I, don't, I, also I don't want to be them, smushed, Carol. I don't. I don't want to be. Smushed. Well, as you were saying, Ty, uh, to all the snakes out there willing to vote for Trump, he's going to be the one to tread on you in the long run. Um, yes. And as per usual, uh, I'm I sorry I, I ruined that joke. It would have been good had had it been made timely. That's OK. <laughs> I, I had it locked and loaded, but it's totally fine for you to jump in there with your terrible jokes, Carol. That's that's what we have you I mean, on for. This is why we don't have a sc- terrible <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys finish without me. Uh, but no, before we <laughs> before we go, uh, Carol, where where are we at? Kamala Harris campaign vibe check less than a month before the election. Go. Whew. I mean, I I can't even enter entertain a Trump win as a possibility right now. And I don't know if that's just my mind rejecting this possibility because um, as we were just alluding to a vote for Trump is a vote for the firing squad for people like us, um, dissidents. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I was supposed to be talking about my positive feelings about hey, no, the no. Harris campaign. They are doing a fucking awesome <laughs> job. 
I I'm super impressed with her in terms of like presentation and content. Um, they're I, I'm impressed. I'm hopeful. We have a month to we have one more month to get this home, and I think we can do it. Get your shit together and. Do- <laughs> Oh, and don't fall for these fucking doom narratives on Twitter because it's not going to help us. Just, yeah, push forward. All right, Ty, Bob, check. How you feeling? What we doing? So, uh, we Kama's been doing great. I'm liking the way that she's kind of going all in in this last stretch. Her and, and uh, Walls doing these dual rallies and Walls has been doing great. He's gotten a little bit more aggressive. I think he realized he was a little too nice at the debate. So he's kind of come out swinging a little bit. And he's I mean, you say that, little... but I think that was actually part of the game plan. <laughs> to make Vance look like even more of a lunatic? <laughs> I mean, just to appeal to people who were like, you know, I'm tired of the fighting on both sides. Yeah. The people who are like the half a percent of voters who haven't made up their mind yet. Anyway, sorry, continue. Well, I do like how um, he does seem to be um, taking a bit more of an aggressive stance and he seems to kind of have a little bit more fire in his belly with some of the shots that he's throwing, you know, at Vance and at Trump. And I think that's hitting home. I think that's with people because they're like, this nice guy's been kind of pushed to the brink, you know, that they're like, yeah, he's, he's bringing that out in him Kamala's Harris um, Kamala's style is a little bit different but it works and her appealing to the younger demographic I think that she's giving them hope and I mean look at Fox Fox is considered the number one cable news station and they get like four million viewers call her daddy has 10 million all the smoke has that black male demographic that I think that she needs to reach um and then like i said just kind of diversifying the podcast and the shows that she's been going on you know the stephen colbert crowd is this more kind of the snarky witty like kind of you know yeah. are um looking for looking for that and then Stern you know going show. on the view getting view. those suburban moms that are watching the view you know at 10 a.m 10 a.m in the morning and stuff i think it's been well played it's well rounded i have a lot of faith in harris And that's what scares the right because they see she has gangbusters what she's raised in just three months and they're trying to to denigrate her. It's like, she didn't get one vote. No, bitch, but she got a billion dollars. So shut the fuck up, okay? Because that right there, like, (laughs) I'm sorry. Like, that's not, that's not flying because if that was the case, she would have crashed and burned within a week of them knowing that she was going to be the candidate. But people flock to her. So they're trying to make people who may be, quote unquote, undecided, though I don't think that's a real thing, but to, to shake their faith and that she has the support. Yeah. You know, I, I think because they, they don't really have any other choice and they haven't succeeded in making people hate her. 2020 was not 2024. She's come a long way. She has really met the moment. And I think when people realized that 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 feeling they were feeling was actual hope, they were like, screw it. I'm, I'm going all in on this. I, I want more of this feeling after coming out of their fever dream. Yeah. So, well, first, so the undecided voter thing. I just throw I, in really quick that Trump has had eight years and never met the moment. Go on. That's true. <laughs> he, yeah and then like him drawing the hair the the hurricane with the sharpie that was the day he became presidential um no so undecided <laughs> yeah so undecided voters i it it actually is a thing but not the way typically that like the media tries to portray it or what you see in these polls like you know you see the undecided voter and it's whatever percentage and you're like wait how is it possible that in a world where you're two options in terms of a candidate that you're voting for or Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. And we know everything we know about Trump. How is it possible that you're undecided that you don't know which one of those candidates you're going to vote for? Well, that's not actually the question. The question is, are you going to vote for a candidate or are you not going to vote at all? And those 
those yeah. people do okay. exist. And That's what you fair. Have, yeah. So you have in terms of, uh, you know, re- disillusioned Republicans who see what the Republican Party has become, but they don't want to vote for a Democrat, but they're looking at Trump and they don't know if they can hold their nose and vote for him yet again. So they're deciding whether or not they're going to stay home uh, next month. In terms, and, and like on the flip side, you have millions of people who look at Trump and they're never going to vote for Trump in their life, never going to vote for a Republican, but they were looking at Biden or now they're currently looking at Harris and they're like, well, I don't know about the specifics of her campaign or her, or her policy platform or, you know, I don't know enough about her to know whether or not I'm going to pull the trigger on voting for her in, in November, but they're never going to vote for Trump. So like in terms of undecided, that's, that's really what we're talking about here. Can the candidates turn out those who won't vote for the other one under any circumstances, but are considering voting for them that that could possibly be the difference. But in terms of like, generally speaking, where the campaign is, uh, you know, the polls are giving if you at least cut out the, the polls that are cooked in terms of favoring Republicans um, to make the averages look more friendly. Uh, the polls for Harris in terms of like the swing states, she's got a slight lead. I mean, it's usually right within the margin for error, if not right above. Uh, so, I mean, that's that's a good start. But in terms of where the campaign is uh, on the ground, it's like in practical terms, while the polls might say it's close, she is entering the month with all the advantages you could possibly want. She's got all the momentum. Um, she's out here campaigning in ways and that typically candidates don't do again with the media blitz here on non-conventional media platforms like podcasts and radio shows and in stern show and whatnot. Trump isn't doing any of that in terms of money. Like you said, uh, you know, she's passed more bills as a tie breaking vote in the Senate than any vice president in history. And now she's out here passing a bill in terms of uh, money raised. And given that she's only been the candidate for, you know, 80 some odd days, that's an incredibly absurd number, just fundraising at a level we've never seen before. It's, it's putting Obama to shame, no offense to Obama, just like that's just, how far she surpassed what he had done previously, Uh, you know, and Trump's fundraising is just, it's it's like, it's slowly trickling up, but it's at a snail's pace. It's nowhere near in terms of like, you know, the just massive haul Harris has taken in. And then Trump's drained Republican voters so dry over the course of the past eight years, just sucking up, you know, what probably over the course of the past eight years, a couple billion dollars, I don't, his his donors might be tapped in terms of small dollar donors. And also just that so many small dollar donors are turning out to support Harris. Like it's li- like you said, it's voting with your checkbook. It shows a level of thusi- enthusiasm for Harris as a candidate that just does not exist on the right in any form or fashion. Um, in terms of the ground game, she's got far more going for her than the Trump campaign. She's got hundreds of hundreds of thousands of volunteers on the ground uh, in, in all of these swing states in a way that Trump doesn't. I mean, you know, they were closing up Trump field offices in North Carolina. And that's the state Trump needs. Like there's no path to victory for Trump to win the Electoral College and lose North Carolina. You're not going to win the blue wall and lose North Carolina and become president because you're probably not going to win the blue wall if that's the case. In all likelihood, if you're losing North Carolina, you're probably losing Georgia and Arizona is a possibility as well. And I know it's been, you know, stated here recently over and over by a lot of people on the right that they have a, you know, active voter advantage in Florida, somewhere close to a million active voters. But that's a little bit deceiving because, you know, inactive voters, can still vote. They don't have to re-register. They don't have to do anything that they like that. They can just show up on election day, cast a vote. And if you look at early voting in terms of uh, requested ballots and also return ballots in most of these swing states, uh, Harris is leading 
by a significant margin. Pennsylvania, for example, I think uh, in terms of requested ballots, uh, Democrats have requested close to something like 67 percent of the ballots and have returned uh, nearly 70 percent more uh, or 70 percent of the ballots. I mean, it's just, you know, she's going to have the advantage going in Election Day and it might not be a margin that Trump will be able to overcome. That's what you want to do. You want to get your votes banked because you never know what might happen over the course of October. It's called the October surprise for a reason. Uh, we don't ne- necessarily know what that may or may not be, uh, but in all likelihood, it's not going to be anything damning for Kamala Harris. So you want to get as many votes in the bank as you can as possible. Harris is doing that. I mean, it just everything is going on her way at this point, all the momentum, all the advantages, And she's not the one running from debates and running from interviews. And every time you turn on a Kamala Harris rally, it looks like, you know, some kind of fucking celebrity Uh, is just hosting an event. It's incredible. The energy is off the charts. And every time you turn on a Trump rally, he's saying something utterly fucking insane. I invite the public to watch his rallies and be the decision maker on his acuity. Uh, And you will see in his rallies how he goes off on tangents, how he is not focused on the needs of the American people with solutions to the issues that concern them the most. A few moments later. They want to do things like no more cows and no windows in buildings. They have some wonderful plans for this country. Oh my God. The contrast could not be more stark. She has what he wishes he had. Uh, uh, what is this? The Wizard of Oz? If he only had a brain? <laughs> I meant, an, I meant a, an adoring audience, but yeah, a brain would be great. I think he cares less about that. Wow. Well, there is no such thing as the wizard, and he's definitely not out here controlling the hurricanes. And that concludes this episode of Part of the Insurrection.